Good morning, I'm Diane Macedo. Thanks for streaming with us. In today's update, a major winter storm is on the move as millions are expected to travel for the holidays. Parts of the West are already cleaning up a foot and a half of snow, with Colorado even seeing thunder snow. Now there are blizzard warnings across the upper Midwest, while the South can expect some flooding. Strong winds are forecast for the Northeast on Christmas Day, so look out for power outages there. The government has a new deal with Pfizer for 100 million more doses of its COVID-19 vaccine. Pfizer says it will deliver all of those extra doses by the end of July. So far, over 4.6 million doses of the vaccine have been delivered and over 614,000 Americans have been vaccinated. Meanwhile, the U.S. set another record for COVID-19 hospitalizations and saw its second deadliest day since the start of the pandemic. Things are particularly bad in the state of California, where many hospitals are already at capacity and healthcare workers are pleading for residents to stay home. Unemployment claims were high again last week with 803,000 people filing for benefits. That's lower than the week before, but still higher than any week before the pandemic. Currently, more than 20 million Americans are filing for jobless benefits through different government programs. And a COVID relief bill aimed at helping those struggling in the pandemic is now in jeopardy. Just hours after Congress passed the bill, the president called it a disgrace, saying the direct stimulus payments need to increase from 600 to $2,000. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the latest. In a surprise four-minute Twitter video, President Trump demanding Congress amend a two-in-one COVID relief and government spending bill heading to his desk. The legislation crafted by Senate Republicans and Trump's own top negotiators. I'm also asking Congress to immediately get rid of the wasteful and unnecessary items from this legislation and to send me a suitable bill. Trump was expected to sign the measure this week to avoid a government shutdown and give a much needed lifeline to millions of Americans expected to lose part of their federal unemployment benefits the day after Christmas. But the president now saying he wants more money in direct stimulus payments included in the bill. Amend this bill and increase the ridiculously low $600 to $2,000 or $4,000 for a couple. The demand quickly embraced by many Democrats who for months had sought to give more direct aid to struggling Americans. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi tweeting, let's do it. And Adam Schiff telling CNN this. I have to think that the Republicans are not going to go anywhere near this, um, but, but we're willing to try. Republicans have indicated the price tag of the $900 billion COVID relief package is already too high. The bill includes $300 in weekly federal unemployment benefits and up to $600 in direct payments to most Americans. But the long overdue aid now hanging in the balance while millions slide into a pandemic-fueled poverty. Time to stop playing that freaking game with our lives. People are dying. They're being evicted from their houses. They're, they're losing everything. And it's unclear what President Trump plans to do once that bill gets to his desk. If he refuses to sign it, the bill becomes law in just 10 days. However, if he does veto it, Congress can override it. Remember, this bill passed with overwhelming support in both the House and the Senate. Diane. All right, Faith Abube, thank you. And from gang member to teacher of the year, a Missouri man who credits educators with saving him is now being honored by the state for how he has paid that forward. ABC News, Rena Roy has his story. Let's get it. Let's get it! All right, let's go. Wake up! Was it Super Hero 1 and 2? If you told Darian Cockrell this would eventually be his life, he might not have believed it. Oh my God, this is literally the best job in the world. It means everything to me. Working as an elementary school PE teacher in St. Louis, Missouri for the past six years has been nothing short of a dream come true. Growing up, you know, knowing my situation, when I went to PE in the elementary school, that was like my home away from home. That was like a different world I can escape to. That was my happy place. And the fact that I get to provide that same happy place for my students means the world to me. And it's clear he means the world to them. I just really like him as a teacher. He's really fun and nice and funny. He makes a lot of really good games. That special connection with his students and dedication to educating, earning him Missouri's Teacher of the Year. Literally the biggest surprise of my life. It's crazy because we just have so many amazing educators in this state. And the fact that they thought that I was one of the best of many is just, it's awesome. 
With that big smile on his face, you'd never know the struggles he overcame to get here. As a young boy, his father, a drug dealer, was killed and his mother was battling drug addiction. I came to school one day um, and I just broke down to my counselor, just pretty much explained to her what was going on in my life and how I couldn't take things anymore. He lived with his grandmother, then bounced around to different foster homes, eventually joining a gang. But his teachers and guidance counselor gave him some tough love and put an end to it. She literally got me right at the cusp of right when I was about to jump off that cliff into more gang life and street life. And right as I was jumping into it, she grabbed me by the neck and was like, nope, you're not going there. And if it were not for her, what she did at that moment, I would not, I definitely wouldn't be where I am today. He credits his counselor for saving his life, and now he's trying to show up in the same way for his students. The way that she showed love and support and the way that she did everything possible to make sure that I was a better kid, I am trying to do that now. I'm trying to pay it forward the same way she did with me. Teaching them to take life one day at a time. To just have fun and not get angry, just try to figure things out. Reminding them they're not alone, especially during these difficult times. Just, you know, it doesn't matter what's going, what's going on in life. Just know that you can get through it. Uh, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. For ABC News Live, I'm Rena Roy. Rena, thank you. Amazing the impact that just one person can have when they really care. And now to our science and technology headlines. Here's Will Reeve. In today's Tech Bites, the big tech deal that wasn't. Tesla's Elon Musk says he wanted to sell his company to Apple three years ago during the darkest days of Tesla's Model 3 rollout, but he claims Apple's Tim Cook refused a meeting. Musk's comments came amid reports Apple is working toward vehicle production in 2024. And Twitter says the incoming Biden administration will take control of the at POTUS Twitter account on January 20th, but the Biden team will not inherit the account's 33 million followers. That's a change from 2017 when President Trump got the account. Finally, KFC says it's getting into video games with the KF console. The company says it will be able to keep your fried chicken warm while you're gaming. Suspiciously, there's no release date, price, or any technical specifications to share just yet. Those are your tech bites, and you can have a bite of chicken while you're playing on your console there, Diane. <laughs> what more could you want? We'll read thanks. And that does it for this ABC News Live update. I'm Diane Macedo. Thanks for joining us. And remember, ABC News Live is here for you all day with the latest news, context, and analysis. I'll see you back here at 3 p.m. Eastern with Kira Phillips for The Breakdown. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.